We've got just one break tonight, guys, and that is a half case of Gypsy Queen Baseball. It's the back half of a case that we started uh, Wednesday night on release night. And, of course, you know the drill. We do a little information before we get started ripping, so let's go ahead with that. Feedback is set to be completely automated on eBay. I do that so you don't ever have to wait on me. Anytime you leave uh, positive feedback for me, you're going to instantly get the same in return. Of course, the second message there is simply to say thank you. Appreciate everyone who bids and breaks and chats and hangs out with me. And keeps me updated on scores, especially during March Madness. Hint, hint. <laughs> And, of course, uh, we are taking a look right now at breaks that are coming up uh, over the next few days. So, tomorrow night, we'll do a three-box inner case of Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs, a seventh and final case of Valiant Baseball, and we'll do a second case of uh, Panini Prism Draft Picks Football, our 2019 draft class in there. Uh, spots are sold by the first letter of the last name. Mascot cards have their own bidding spot in that particular break. Monday night will find us doing our fifth and final case of National Treasures football and a fifth case of Inception baseball. On Tuesday, a Leaf Autograph football jersey and a half case of 2019 Don Russ baseball. That will actually be the start of a new case with Don Russ. Wednesday, we have one new release that comes out on Wednesday, and that's Court Kings basketball. So we're going to open a case of that, and then we will start a new case of Gypsy Queen Baseball, open half of it as well. Both of those on Wednesday, and we're going to start early Wednesday night, guys, at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. On Thursday night, it'll be Gold Rush Trifecta. Yeah, Gold Rush, uh, of course, you know, Series 1 they sold out of, but they've, they've uh, come out with Series 2 that actually releases on Wednesday so we're going to break that on Thursday night. Uh, for those of you who might not remember, it has three autograph memorabilia items in it. It can be uh, jerseys, it can be footballs, mini helmets, uh, 16 by 20 photographs, cleats, all kinds of fun stuff you can find in Trifecta. But three autograph memorabilia items is the takeaway there. We'll do a second case of Court Kings basketball and a third case of 2019 Panini Prisms Draft Picks football all on Thursday night. So that's what you need to know for the days ahead. Here's what you need to know for tonight. Just the one break, and that is our Gypsy Queen break, and it should be on the way to you roughly Wednesday. It says plus or minus a day. That just means simply if things go super well uh, in my week, maybe it gets out a little sooner. If something goes way off the rails, maybe it slides a day later. But Wednesday is my best estimate for when this will be out the door and on the way to you. So tonight, this is a five box half case of 2019 Gypsy Queen Baseball. Uh, once again, the back half of a case that we started on Wednesday night, which was release night. So this is break number two. Uh, this ended tonight on eBay, Saturday night, the 30th of March. And of course, a format that many of you are familiar with by now. We have our team names on the left-hand side and your eBay user ID is uh, across from your team on the right-hand side. So that's all the news that we have. Now uh, you're going to notice one little thing here before we get started, and that's going to be that the background goes a little bit out of focus. And don't worry that, I mean, I'm doing that on purpose, uh, but what I'm saying is we're still going to be able to see the cards. We'll actually be able to see them up closer than we would otherwise. So uh, don't worry about that. We're going to be all good. So Gypsy Queen, um, if you haven't opened it yet this year, our box toppers are a little different than they have been in years past. You know, we're, we typically have those Glassworks kind of oversized box toppers. But this year, instead, they gave us a little pack of three chrome cards. So that's our box topper every time, which I kind of like better, truthfully. And then we're also going to find two on-card autographs per box, as well as some numbered things, uh, most likely some parallels, some inserts, and things like that, which we'll kind of take a look at as we go along through. So Greg is here tonight. So is Buckeye as well. And they're both in chat hanging out with me. I don't know if anybody watched the early game today 
with uh, Texas, the, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech uh, knocked off the number one seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. And uh, yeah, the Red Raiders looked, well, honestly, it was kind of a sloppy second half for both teams. But when it came down to crunch time, the Red Raiders looked pretty good. And at the way it's going right now, I'm not going to be at all surprised if Purdue doesn't knock off uh, Virginia in the, in the late game that's probably about halftime by now is my guess. So these are our box toppers. So Mike Trout is the first one. Some of these will be refractors, and when they are refractors, they will be numbered. That's J.D. Martinez for the Red Sox. They all have a fair amount of curvature to them. You can probably notice they're not 100% flat coming out of there. It's just the coating. Not much we can do about that. And this one is numbered. It is numbered to 150, Starlin Castro for the Marlins. So those are your three chrome box toppers out of box number one. Michael's here. Hi, Michael. How are you doing tonight? Who's everybody got tonight? Who, you, who do you have, Michael? Who do you have, Buckeye and Greg? Greg, you said uh, you you like that Texas Tech won. Yeah, I was, you know, they've never been to the Final Four in the, in the entire history of the program. They had never made a Final Four. So I was kind of pulling for Texas Tech myself in that little matchup. And Greg, your Duke Blue Devils barely escaped again last night. Uh, I mean, another at the buzzer where it could have gone either way. Of course, my Kentucky Wildcats were not far behind you. <laughs> After having the game pretty well under control for most of the game, like the last five minutes, they just went crazy and fell apart. And we, we just about came down to the wire along with your Blue Devils pretty close to it anyway. Jimbo is here. You have the Rangers. Jared, this, uh, hi, Jared. And this is box number one. It's just now, uh, we're just now getting underway. Eric is around tonight, too, looking for some mojo for the Mets. Buckeye, you've got the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. Jared's looking for some White Sox. And Greg's giving me a score update. Produce up by one at halftime. I tell you, Purdue, every time I have seen them play in the tournament, they look the part of somebody that could uh, win the whole thing, don't they? I mean, their three-point shooting is outrageously good. So I don't know. Of course, they got to get out of tonight first, but uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Either way, you should be in line to watch a good game tonight with that one, I would think. So the Mets have our first hit. How about that, Eric? That is Brandon Nemo for the Mets with our first autograph hit. Now, there are some short prints in here. Um, traditionally, they're going to be your retired players for the most part. So when we see retired players, you know, they're mostly going to be short prints in here. That's the Tampa Bay Rays. It's numbered to 250. When we see that little green border, that basically tells us... Uh, we're looking at something to 250. Of course, there are some other variations. There are black and white variations that you pull numbered to 50 or that we could pull, I should say. And some others that are less likely to come out. But there are some 4th of July variations, Jackie Robinson, that type thing that we could possibly find. Loads of these inserts, tarot inserts. So we'll find lots of them. We won't probably uh, flip them all over, but that one was Corey Kluber for the Indians. Unless something looks like it's going to be numbered, we might not flip every one of them, just in the essence of keeping things uh, kind of rolling there. But I like the tarots. Oh, and we'll find some minis in here too. Should find some minis as we go along. Greg says, you're, Greg, you're looking forward to the Michigan State-Duke game tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing by adding the looking forward to. You just typed in Michigan State-Duke, but I know you're looking forward to it, and I am too. I think it's going to be a great game. That is a, a little fortune teller mini Aaron Nola 
for the fillies. I always put those in sleeves so they don't scoot off and wander away since they're cut differently. Michael, you're looking for the Otani in here. Okay, so you've got the angels. So we need to find a little Shohei love for you. All right, my friend. We can do that. We can, well, I, I don't know for sure if we can do that. I can work on the mojo and hope that it comes through. That I know I can do. Another tarot there, that one, Aaron Judge for the Yankees. Strength is the is the name on that one. Yeah, Jared, there were some bazooka backs in the first half of it. Um, I found them, of course, when I was sorting. Obviously, to look at every single card front and back would be quite a uh, challenge, and it would add about double the amount of time to the break if we did it going through. Um, if it is a thing that you want to look at at the end of the break, you can let me know if you're still hanging out. We could do a really super quick sort of only the backs after everything is done and recap, so not everybody has to hang out unless they want to. And even that would take us uh, a little bit of time, but it would be more, it would take us less time to do it that way than it would to touch every single card here front and back every single time but yeah in the first half we did find I don't remember I shipped all that out today but I sorted it yesterday I don't know there were a handful in there anyway two three four of them something like that now the hits obviously I generally turn over to show the backs but just the standard stuff I don't typically but again if you want to do that at the end of the break that's that's fine. You would just need to hit me up and remind me that you are still here and that that's what you want to do and we can do it. But otherwise, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to A, keep it rolling and B, I kind of am a fan of the least amount of handling possible for most, most cards most of the time. Freddie Freeman and the Braves. And a little fortune teller again. This one is Blake Snell for the Tampa Bay Rays. Now that one looks like it will uh, could potentially be numbered. And it is to 250 with Christian Yelich and the Brewers. Logo swap is another thing we could find. If we find uh, the GQ logo down there is gone, replaced with with the gypsy's head that's what they call logo swap so it's possible that we can find some of those variations too which i think i failed to mention at the outset so black and white parallels are numbered to 50. there's molina and it happens to be first in the series as well Woohoo! so the cardinals numbered to 50 with the molina black and white parallel coming out there Next up, another fortune teller mini. That one is Aaron Judge and the Yankees. I think I see a, a red uh, coming through over here. You know what that means. That's a nice low numbered one. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, we're having some crazy early springtime storms right now. Like as in thunder and heavy rain and high wind and possibly some hail earlier, it sounded like. I don't know, some crazy stuff going on. Uh, the worst of it seems to have passed, so I don't think we'll have any power issues, but just understand if suddenly we go dark, that's what happened, Then, as soon as the power came back on, I would come back on. This is number to 10. It's the Mets and Jacob deGrom. Just signed a big contract extension. Here's our second autograph out of this box. It's Mitch Hanager. So Seattle Mariners uh, bringing home the second autograph out of box number one. So Bo Jackson, that'll be a short print. I almost guarantee it. What's our card number? 316. It sure is. The short prints, uh, for those of you who might not know the numbering on them, start with 301. 
and then they go through however many cards are in the series. I think there are 320 in this, right? I think there are. So it would be 301 through 320 are going to be your short prints in Gypsy Queen. All right, I'm going to get them all out of here again. So we're going to do this case. This case, obviously, we've done as a half case. The next case, we're also going to break as a half case. After that, we might go to some full case breaks after that. I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but I'm kind of leaning towards maybe doing some full case breaks um, after we get through the first couple of cases. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That is for the Astros Verlander. The challenge is the sorting and the shipping of that many cards, you know. Colorado Rockies Trevor Story. And our third box topper is Paul Goldschmidt, who's been just like knocking them out of the park, literally. That's to 150 for the Cardinals. So St. Louis, I'm sure, is happy with their shiny new addition because he's been playing really well. Jared, you said the Mets are killing it. <laughs> are you talking about in real life, as in the game? Or are you talking about um, the hit they have in this break? Well, the two hits in this break. I'm thinking that's probably what you're talking about, because you got the DeGrom to 10, and then, of course, you've got the, the autograph hit there with Brandon. So I'm thinking that's what you're talking about, but I'm just double-checking. I was just glad to see the Mets didn't send Alonso and all their young guys down to do that crappy service time manipulation. I was happy to see that they kind of did the right thing. So did the Padres. But then, you know, it came out um, over the weekend that the main reason the Padres did that is that Manny Machado and I guess Hosmer and I don't know if anybody else was involved took the owner out to dinner and basically kind of pleaded with him to do the right thing and, you know, let put Tatis on the opening day roster, not send him back down and, and do all that crap. And so that was, I don't know, like I was happy that the Padres had done it until you kind of know that some of the other players had to go beg the owner. I don't know. I thought that was weird a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. Alonso looks like he's going to be really good. Um, we've been pulling him a lot out of the Leaf products. And I know in the beginning, some people, like before we were really into the hardest spring training, there's a Verlander fortune teller. Uh, the people that had the Mets, you know, they were like, oh, man, we're only, we're only getting Alonso in here. <laughs> you know? And, of course, there is another hit for him. I think Woods Richardson's in there, too. But... Uh, those same people right now are probably pretty happy with their Alonso's because that kid is shaping up to be pretty good. And an Aaron Nola black and white to 50 for the Philadelphia Phillies. They were also uh, off to a pretty good start. Nothing like uh, walking Bryce Harper only to have Reese Hoskins hit the Grand Slam, right? <laughs> I, mean, I didn't see that personally, but I caught it on the highlights, of course. Hard to miss that one. That was a nice little result. The Blue Jays have themselves an autograph hit with Ryan Barucki. I could get the sleeve facing the right way it might be helpful kind of hard to get the card in when the sleeve is facing with the opening in the opposite direction sorry about that <laughs> I don't know sometimes I think I pick them back up after the break and I somehow get them in there uh, the opposite of the way they should be I don't know why that JT riddle was facing the opposite way let me look at it a minute um, I don't really see anything that looks like it's any sort of parallel, so I don't know. I mean, it looks doesn't look like a parallel to me, but 
I'll set it aside and double check it later and make sure. Jared, you said as a Braves fan that hurt. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That was a rough one for if you were the Braves fans for sure. That was a hard one. You guys can probably, possibly, I don't know if you can hear uh, it storming out there. or Whatever's hitting up against the windows, making a pretty good little run at things right now. So, once again, just keep in mind, if power were to go out, um, I would come back online as soon as I could. I don't think it will, but you never know. You get into some of these high wind scenarios, anything can happen. So... Fortunately, my neighborhood doesn't get hit with that too, too often. And when they do, it's usually just kind of like a little blip. You know what I mean? Like it goes off and 60 seconds later comes back on just in time to reset all of your electronic devices. <laughs> Have everything flashing. There's a fortune teller, Yelich, and the Brewers. And another fortune, uh, this is a, a tarot, I mean, uh, for Stanton, King of Swords. This should be numbered to 250 for the Rangers, and it is, with minor. have we got in here? Oh, a redemption is coming. Okay, so here's how redemptions go. I know, right? How mean was that? I know, so mean. <laughs> I keep them up here in this little housekeeping area. That's what I call that space. And they stay face down until the end of the break. And then at the very end of the break, we flip all of them over at once. An Arenado uh, tarot for the Rockies. And at that point, we'll also go to the TOPS website and verify the team up on the screen just so everybody will be able to see it and we'll be on the same page. But yeah, I make you wait. I know. Sad but true. Hi, Jimbo. Did I say hi to you already? I don't think I did. Did I see you earlier? Or was that you first jumping into chat? I don't know. I think I have too much Red Bull in me. <laughs> if the redemption is a mystery redemption, it's given out by way of random. We did hit one of those uh, already out of the first half of the case, I think. Out of the first half of the case of this. We hit a mystery somewhere recently. I think it was out of here. I don't know. I've opened so much stuff. Pretty sure it was, though. And there's a little tarot for the Braves with Ozzy Albies. Yeah, so the redemption could very well be uh, the mystery player redemption. So if it is, that's how it will roll. And a fortune teller, Juan Soto, for the Nationals. Now that fortune teller snuck up on me. Chris Bryant, Cubbies. That's the only thing I don't like about those fortune tellers is because they are cut differently. They always want to kind of jump out of the stack. You know what I mean? They don't want to kind of you always have to be careful when you're holding a stack that one doesn't fly out of there a little hydration break there
Yeah, I'm really glad they kind of switched to the three chrome cards for the box toppers. I have a, a strong preference for that over those five by seven glass works that we've pulled in past years for that. And our first is for the Phillies with Segura. Our next one is DeGrom and the Mets. And we have another refractor that is numbered. Hey, hey, it's Aaron Judge for the Yankees. Numbered to 150 on that one. Gypsy Queen was um, surprisingly, apparently, in a little bit of a short supply scenario with at least some of my distributors this year. I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I didn't have any real trouble getting what I asked for, uh, for the most part. But I did have one of my distributors tell me that they didn't get uh, nearly as much as they were expecting to get. Or something like that. I don't know. They said that's basically the way he phrased it. So I don't know if that means they got cut by tops or if that just means tops didn't make as much or what. I don't know. Haha, <laughs> Michael, that Aaron Judge must be heading your way. He typed in all rise. <laughs> of course, that's the nickname for, for Aaron. On the back of his player's weekend jersey and such. Which are also options in here. Player's weekend jerseys. Uh, I mentioned the 4th of July earlier in the Jackie Robinson. I forgot to mention that there's possibility to pull player players in a player's weekend jersey. Also as parallel. Those don't come out very often. But, but they can show up. Fortune teller Arenado. And an autograph makes an appearance here. It's for the Giants with Steven Dugar. Jared, I'm with you. I like the Gypsy Queen set. To me, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot like heritage in the sense that the cards have the feel of cards that I remember growing up. Now, depending on your age, Somebody might be like, wait, what? <laughs> but if you're of a certain age, these are the kind of cards you remember. Uh, the texture, the look, the feel, the whole thing. So I've always been a fan of both Heritage and Gypsy Queen because I enjoy that throwback kind of feel to it and look to it. Not that I don't like the modern cards as well. Obviously, I mean, I do, but... There's a certain nostalgia to being able to uh, to go through and have these kind of cards in your hand, you know? It makes you feel like you should have the, the stick of gum that was really like chewing a piece of wood. <laughs> it should come out at any time. J.D. Martinez, fortune teller. For the Red Sox. Uh, Jared, you said you're of that age. Okay, so you're you're with me in that boat then. You're you know what I'm talking about. The cards from back in the day when there were not thousand dollar boxes of cards and well, there's boxes of cards more than a thousand dollars. Flawless, you know. Some of those more than a thousand a box. Yeah, no, I, I was growing up in the era where they were sold everywhere. Gas stations, grocery stores, <laughs> racks and racks of them. No autographs, no relics, just chasing the rookie cards. I 
I've actually still got a bunch of heritage down there that I will do something with sometime soon. I mean, we broke some of it, and then I just kind of set it aside, and we're, we, we will get back to it. I just kind of stashed a little bit of it, I guess. Decide when and where to... Maybe we'll start working it in again, maybe next weekend. It's just a lot came out at once that has so much base for baseball. And we had Donruss baseball come out, and then right on top of that was Heritage, and very little break till we hit Gypsy Queen, and it's hard to work in a lot of those breaks amongst all the other sports when these have so many base cards. You know, you got Inception mixed in there, which doesn't have a lot of cards, but you got to still break it, and I don't know, sometimes... I wish uh, they would space out the heavy base breaks or heavy base releases. I wish they'd space them out a little more. That was for the Astros with Jose Altuve on the tarot card that we saw a moment ago. A fortune teller. And that's Uraeus for the Padres. Dave says I should do a Gypsy Queen Heritage Mixer. You mean like three Gypsy Queen and three Heritage? Or you mean like six and six? Or what are you thinking there? Gosh, there's so many cards in both of those. Fortune Teller Jose Altuve Astros. I need to do another baseball mixer, period. I've got a lot of different baseball stuff. Some of it in random quantities. Um, and some of it from older years. And I need to, you know, occasionally I throw in those mixers. You know, 8, 10, 12 box mixers of various sports. We need to do another one. Actually, for all of them, baseball, football, and basketball. I need to work on that. Carson Kelly and the St. Louis Cardinals is our autograph hit. Our second autograph hit, I think, out of that box. And there's a Bryce Harper tarot insert. Whoops, that's going to be numbered. Rowdy to 250 for the Blue Jays. Jared, you bought a 10-year-old box of Heritage once and tried the gum. <laughs> it was a really bad idea. <laughs> I don't doubt it, man. I mean, it was a, probably a bad idea for us to try the gum when it was supposed to be fresh, right? <laughs> I mean, that stuff was terrible even when it was fresh. So 10-year-old gum would be kind of nasty for sure. There was somebody, uh, I guess it was maybe last year, somebody was telling me they had gotten some uh, some older boxes and of course, uh, or packs or whatever that had the gum in it and their kids dared them to try it, to, to chew the gum. That is Jacob deGrom for the Mets. And the deal was... If he would chew the gum, the kids would do some kind of chores. I don't remember what it was, but some kind of, you know, house cleaning kind of chores. And so he did do it. And he says it was just awful. <laughs> but he got the chores out of the kids, right? Or whatever it was. I, I think it was chores of some sort. George Brett and the Royals with another short print. And at that time, I don't remember exactly what the age, what, like how old he said the gum was. I just remember thinking, oh, I don't know if I would have tried it even to get housework out of the kids. It just, oh, <laughs> sounds like the kind of thing that might send you to the ER. <laughs> Dave, you're thinking a three and three half heritage, half gypsy queen? Eh, maybe. Maybe. I mean, that's not uh, out of the question for sure. I've got some... 
I don't know. I've got a bunch of different stuff around here that I need to do some things with. I don't really have loose Gypsy Queen or loose Heritage, though. I don't think. I did have a little bit of loose Gypsy Queen, but I, my distributor asked me and he needed it to help somebody out. And so I said, fine, he could, you know, send me the sealed case, uh, but he could have my loose all except for one box that I wanted to open myself, but I let him have the rest of my loose. So if we did it that way, we'd have to do several different breaks that way, because once case is busted up, you know. For the Yankees, that one's got a lot of curvature on it. It's Andujar Chrome. Our next chrome out is for the Tigers with uh, Lugo. And our third out is Ryan O'Hearn, numbered to, uh, to 150 for the Kansas City Royals. Buckeye, you have a bunch of older packs with the gum and you haven't decided what you're going to do with it. You mean what you're going to do with the gum or what you're going to do with the packs? As in you haven't decided if you're going to sell them or open them? Because I'm telling you what, that gum is going to be like a steel plate in there, I would imagine. You could probably almost weld that stuff together and like build something out of it. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't want to get too involved with uh, that old gum. Gosh, I still remember what that stuff was like. It was just so nasty. <laughs> Even when I was a kid, you know, that gum was just gross. <laughs> Jared, don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah, nobody, nobody would advise that, I don't think. You might crack a tooth or something, man. I don't know. It does not sound safe. No, in my luck, that's what would happen. I would crack a tooth or something. So here's a logo swap for us. You see the gypsy's face down there where our GQ logo would normally be. That is Eddie Rosario for the twins. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Dave says it crumbles up and basically turns into like the equivalent of Pepto-Bismol or something. Oh, that's just nasty, man. Oh, yuck. Is there anything in the world that tastes worse than Pepto-Bismol? I haven't had that in years, but I remember that when I was a kid, too. Gosh, that is nasty. Acuna, fortune teller for the Braves. Oh, yeah, that was some heinous, heinous stuff. <laughs> Mike Trout and the Angels tarot insert. Michael said make it an online challenge and watch the teenagers today go crazy doing it. <laughs> That's about the truth. I mean, don't they have some of the most bizarre stuff? Like eating Tide Pods and other equivalent gross stuff things like why would you want to eat laundry detergent like what genius thought that's a great idea to try and then who went along behind them saying oh yeah wow that's what I've been waiting to do today eat my Tide Pods I mean like for real I don't understand man that just means I'm old but I don't get it there's another uh redemption you saw it uh go up there into our little housekeeping holding pen We'll call it our bullpen tonight. So our housekeeping bullpen has two redemptions in it at the moment. Yeah, Jared, exactly. The prices of all those old packs would go through the roof with those kids looking for that nasty gum. <laughs> I think you should try to start that, Michael. I do. I would be on board with that if you decide um, that that is a good thing to try. I think you, if you want to want to try to start that challenge, I will support you in it. Oh, you are right. You're right. Michael types in there, basically, I'm going to paraphrase it a bit, but the, he's so glad that there was no social media around when he was a kid. 
because of, you know, stupid stuff he did. And we all did stupid stuff as a kid. And I, I mean, not like certainly I never ate laundry detergent. Okay. Like not that kind of stupid, <laughs> but yet we've all done things that probably were happy that there were not some, that there wasn't someone always taking pictures or video throughout our lives. Of course, these kids, they couldn't imagine living without it. But yeah, I'm with you. I wouldn't have wanted to grow up with that. Good grief. Who knows? I would have never, I would have been grounded constantly, probably. It was Glaber Torres for the Yankees, fortune teller. I would have just, I would have spent my entire, you know, life grounded <laughs> for something stupid or another, probably. Now, I thought that D. Gordon might, uh, I thought that color looked a little different, but I guess it isn't, but I thought that it was, but it's not numbered, nor does it have uh, any kind of special back, so I guess it's just a slight different tint that really isn't anything uh, different at all. A black and white Suarez to 50 for my Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati's in the house. Gotta give my Reds their victories where they can get them. And sometimes the only place they can get them is in a card break. <laughs> I know, I'm hard on them. But I, you know, I can smack talk them. They're my team. The A's, Chris Davis. Well, that and the fact that I would be in no real position to stop anyone else who might be smack-talking them either because they have been pretty bad in recent years. Dave, you just want them to taste what a treat it was when we were kids. <laughs> I don't think any of them would try it. Well, maybe like you said, if you made it like some kind of online challenge, they might try it then. But just if you just walked up to them and handed it to them, I think they would all be like, no. No. <laughs> Aaron Judge Tarot for the Yankee for the Yankees. But of course we weren't that way as kids. You handed it to us and it was every bit as gross then, but we're like, yeah, bring it on. We'll chew it. Pull out some teeth. Kyle Tucker and the Astros. Fortune teller. And a little tarot there for uh Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers. I don't know about Kersh, man. Hurt again to start this season. I mean, I don't think... I I don't know if Clayton Kershaw is going to hold up. He's had so many problems last season. Not starting off well this season. I think he might be looking at uh, Walker Bueller maybe being the next uh, prominent ace there for the Dodgers. That's my thought on it. Kirsch may have gotten too many miles on that arm and that shoulder. Dave says, lick the big red gum wrapper and stick it to your head. <laughs> Gosh, I remember big red gum. And there was like a fruit stripe gum too. Do you, you guys remember that one? Had a zebra, or I think, on the package. I think it might have been called Fruit Stripe. Or it might have been called, I don't know, maybe it's called something else. As to 250, the Padres, Will Myers. But yeah, I remember Big Red Gum. Gosh, I hadn't thought about that in a long time. That was kind of crazy. But you know a lot of that stuff, like the old gums and candies and even the older sodas that you can't get anymore, there are places that make them now in like small batches and you can buy it online. And Cracker Barrel has a section of like vintage candies and gums and sodas in their stores, uh, in the stores that are, you know, the lobby of the restaurant, if you will. It's that little general store. So, you know, nostalgia. We all go back and look for things we had when we were kids. Even the nasty stuff, I guess. Danny Jansen. Autograph for the Blue Jays. Toronto love. 
Yeah, so it was called Fruit Stripe. Okay, so you so somebody else does remember it. Jared, he says it's the best gum ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I don't know why I, I hadn't thought about that forever until uh, you all typed in about Big Red. And for some reason, that made me think of Fruit Stripe. I don't really know particularly why, but it did. <laughs> Jimbo said the flavor of Fruit Stripe lasted for all of 30 seconds. I would have probably said closer to 15 seconds, but yeah, I feel you. <laughs> it's like a little rush of flavor, and then it's like, oh, it's gone? Oh, okay. <laughs> See, that's how they upsold you. You could chew the whole pack of gum in under five minutes because the flavor went out so fast. The Astros with a chrome box topper for Carlos Correa. And our second chrome box topper here is for the Diamondbacks with David Peralta. And then the Cubbies with Tony Rizzo, our third one. So this is our last box in this break, too. So it's also last box mojo kind of kicking in right now, too. So let's not forget about that. It's a little last box mojo time. Dave, yes, definitely. It was good for two or three chews, and then that was kind of it. It Fruit Stripe did not hold its flavor very long at all. But those two or three or five or ten chews that you got out of it were excellent. <laughs> and do you guys remember, um, I think it was called Big League Gum, and it came packaged like it was chewing tobacco. And it was like strings of gum, so it was literally like cut to make to make you feel like it was chewing tobacco and packaged that way too. Like I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. If other than that, if you had it, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> but I think it was called Big League Gum. But of course, they could never get away with that today, right? It would be like glorifying, you know, tobacco or whatever. But we used to have candy cigarettes. Y'all remember that? I mean, it was like, your parents would buy you candy cigarettes, no problem. <laughs> These days, good grief, they'd take your kid and put them in child services. We'd come and get your kid. These days, we gave them candy cigarettes and big league chewing gum. That is a Edwin Diaz for the Mets, a little uh, fortune teller mini there. Big League Chew is what it was called. Okay, thank you, Dave and Jimbo. Big League Chew. Yeah, so some crazy stuff. Oh, this is a nice hit. Uraeus. How about that, kids? That's a good one for the San Diego Padres. Last box, Mojo kicking in and delivering a very nice hit. Oh, there's um, a short print as well. The Babe. With a nice little short print for the Yankees. And a fortune teller. Is that Max Scherzer? Yeah. For the Nats. And what else we got? What else? I want to see that other... I want to see what's under those redemptions. Like, really a lot. <laughs> I didn't look either, okay? So I, I have to wait right alongside you. But I'm really anxious to see what's under there. I don't think they would both be mystery player autographs. I feel like one of them at least will be a play a, for a player. But I don't know. Could be. Could be mystery, I guess. Michael, you're liking your Babe Ruth short print. Good, man. Good, good, good. I like that they make the short prints in here. The Hall of Famers, typically retired guys. Um, I kind of like that about Gypsy Queen. Adds a little fun to it. A little twist, if you will. 
Oh, Kikuchi. Uh, Kik oh, Kikuchi. I'll get it out in a minute. <laughs> and Soto are both redemptions in here, you think. Well, that would be nice for the for either one, but uh, is that a th no? That's a black and white. But uh, Kikuchi in particular uh, would probably be a pretty good ROI for the Mariners, being that it would be his, you know, rookie to fifty Blue Jays black and white Baraki. I mean, Juan Soto would be nice to have too, but Juan, of course, it's not going to be his his rookie. Whereas Kikuchi, it would be. Our next autograph out of this box is Corbin Burns. Milwaukee Brewers taking one home with Corbin Burns. So that's our last autograph that's live in here. But of course, we may find some additional short prints or parallels. And then we do still have our... Um, redemptions to flip over. What do, where did we pull? We pull uh, out of something recently. Where did I pull Kikuchi? Oh, Donruss. That's where it was. Thinking he was... I knew we had pulled that. I think it was a, possibly a redemption there as well think it was but anyway we pulled that out of Don Russ his rookie card to short print in Don Russ too so I guess I should have kind of realized he was probably a redemption in here as well usually if they're a redemption with one company they're going to be a redemption with the other not always but often There's another tarot. That one is Acuna for the Braves. Tanner Roark, my Cincinnati Reds, to 250. A little love for Cincy. Another fortune teller mini. That one's DeGrom and the Mets. And a fortune teller Mookie Betts. Red Sox. All right, we're coming up on the last of it here. Fortune teller J.D. Martinez. Oh, hang on, hang on. Somebody jumped right out of my hand there. Let's see how we... I caught him most... Well, mostly caught him, but he doesn't appear to be any worse for the wear. I think we're still okay there, but that base uh, there for Brandon did try to go flying on me. Javi Baez, Cubbies, Fortune Teller Mini. All right, that's the last of the live stuff. Now we've got these two redemptions we're going to be flipping over. We've got a few things we'll recap after we flip our redemptions. So that's what I'm getting moved around up here right now. And let me get this situated. All right, we're ready to go. I'm going to put these in sleeves so that I can write on them after we flip them over. Juan Soto, look at Jared calling it. <laughs> Juan Soto, of course, is the Nationals, but again, we will go to the uh, tops checklist and verify the team so everybody will get a chance to see it. And they're both Juan Sotos. Dang, man, how about that? 
Nationals uh, went from zero to 60 uh, instantly right there with a pair of Juan Soto's. What are the odds, right? I mean, first of all, that there were two in the case. And secondly, that both of them would end up in this break. Because, you know, we completely randomized uh, the way the boxes were done, too. I opened the case, took all 10 boxes out, you know, numbered them on the end, let random uh, figure out for us which one we were going to open, you know, which six we opened the first night. What? Versus the other night. What happened there? Didn't I just click on the checklist? Yeah. Huh. That's weird. So let's just try another checklist. So the other checklists are there, but when I click on Gypsy Queen, it's not. Why is that? Huh. Okay. 2019 Gypsy Queen open. Not found. Weird. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we won't be verifying it on the Tops website because their stupid thing is messed up. Is that the only one that's messed up? Yeah, because Inception works and... Heritage works. That is so strange. Gypsy Queen's the only one that doesn't work. Well, anyway, we do know Juan Soto's a national, so, you know, there you go. I prefer to show it up there so everyone can see it and you know that that it is there, but, but it isn't going to let us tonight for some reason. Top's website acting stupid. But anyway. Um, oh, Michael, you were hoping they were both going to be Aaron Judge. That would have been excellent if they had been. But instead, we've got a pair of Juan Sotos for the Nationals were our two redemptions. But let's do a little recap here. We're going to take a spin through uh, all of our box toppers. So these are the chrome cards that uh, comprised our box toppers. few of them are numbered. Uh, that one is to 150. And this Aaron Judge here, I believe, is also to 150. And to, to 150 again. Lots to 150, didn't we? And another one to 150. That one was the Marlins. Was that the Marlins? Yeah, it was the Marlins. I was like, I didn't remember pulling the Marlins, but I forgot we, way, it was the first one we looked at, I think, Starlin Castro was. All right, these are numbered cards that don't have an autograph attached. So Tanner Roark to 250 for the Reds, the black and white parallel numbered to 50 for the Blue Jays, the Padres numbered to 250, Cincinnati Reds to 50 with Suarez, Rowdy Telez for the Blue Jays to 250, the Texas Rangers to 250, the Phillies with your Aaron Nola to 50. Number to 10 for the Mets. You hit Jacob deGrom. Nice one. Black and white parallel for the Cardinals to 50. And the Tampa Bay Rays to 250. So our uh, numbered card cards that didn't have autographs attached. These are our short prints. For the Yankees, it's Babe Ruth. Uh, that's actually a logo swap, not a short print. Uh, but regardless... It is a parallel to Eddie Rosario and the Twins. Have George Brett for the Royals and Bo Jackson uh, also for the Royals. Now, guys, there could possibly be uh, some additional short prints in there that I will find when I sort. But those are the ones that I recognized, you know, caught them as they went through from the image. But again, anything from 301 up to the end of the set is technically considered a short print. I think it's a series of 320 cards, so that would be 301 through 320. Uh, but again, if they're in there, I should catch them when I'm sorting, even if I didn't uh, catch them live. So, once again, our redemption to Juan Soto with an indigo parallel, which means you're going to be numbered on that one, and then a regular unnumbered Gypsy Queen autograph, also Juan Soto, a pair for the Nationals. Michael said you want to judge, but you'll take the Juan Sotos. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Corbin Burns for the Milwaukee Brewers. Here's a nice one for the Padres with Urias. The Blue Jays, Danny Jansen. The St. Louis Cardinals, Carson Kelly. Stephen Dugar for 
the San Francisco Giants. There's the Blue Jays again with Ryan Barucki. Mitch Hanager and the Seattle Mariners. And Brandon Nimmo for the Mets. So that is Gypsy Queen for tonight. Um, so for those of you who might have missed it earlier, I'll put up the spreadsheet information here one more time. You can get a little glance at uh, some, some info here. So once again, anticipating this to be on the way to you roughly Wednesday. If the week goes really well, could go a day sooner. If the week goes really off the rails, could go a day later. But uh, kind of plan on the Wednesday time frame is my best estimate at this point as to when these will be out the door and on the way to you. Don't have to worry about consolation cards here because every team pulled cards of some sort, obviously, because everything ships out of that break. So our breaks that are listed on eBay that we're going to be doing over the course of the next few days. So Sunday night, uh, tomorrow night, an Onyx three-box inner case of preferred players autograph baseballs, Leaf Valiant baseball full case break number seven, and our Prism Draft Picks football full case break number two. Monday night, we'll do our fifth and final case of National Treasures football, and we'll do a fifth case of Inception baseball. On Tuesday night, a Leaf Autograph football jersey and a half case of Donruss baseball, which will be the start of a new case. On Wednesday, we are going to start early, kids, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Court Kings comes out that day, so we'll open a 16-box case of Court Kings basketball and a half case of Gypsy Queen baseball, which will be the start of a new case. Thursday, we're looking at Gold Rush Trifecta Football. It's Series 2, and it just comes out on Wednesday. We'll start opening it on Thursday, and it will have three autograph memorabilia items in it. It can be anything from 16 by 20 photographs to jerseys, footballs, mini helmets, uh, cleats, all kinds of possibilities in there. We'll also open a second case of Court Kings basketball and a third case of 2019 Prism Draft Picks football all on Thursday night. So I think that is all the news to use in here tonight then. So uh, Buckeye, you're out of here and Eric's out and Michael too. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you spending part of your weekend with me. We will, of course, be back at it tomorrow night. Hopefully, I will see you again then, but if not then, sometime soon. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Enjoy March Madness, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Bye now.